All right, I hear the recording in progress, so we'll get started. Okay, so we're here. We have 1.8 left. I'll do 1.8 today and tomorrow, and our first test is Friday. Okay, so some review of the test and rules and procedures. There'll be about 10 questions in the test, roughly. Coverage is everything here. Okay. And again, if you didn't catch it, 1.6, we're skipping 69B, 71B, and 73B. And for 1.8, let's see, 45, just do A and B. If you can't read that, that's A and B, and skip problem 37. So you turn in this homework. Um, I'll accept it anytime after class Thursday, up until half an hour after the test. Okay, so there'll be about 10 questions, all very similar to the homework. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six sections. You can expect one question from every section and then you know a couple more from, perhaps from others and miscellaneous here. So 10 questions roughly total, just like the homework. I don't give any tricks, I don't give any surprises. Mind if you haven't already done so, I need an ID from you for a class like this. I don't get to know what you look like. So how do I know it's really you that's taking the test? So if you haven't already done so, give me something like this for your driver's license. I just need your name and your photo. I don't need anything else. Take off your date of birth, address, you know, height, weight, and other sensitive information. Just darken it out and that's okay by me, All right? Uh, there's a 70% homework requirement. You must submit at least 70% of the homework. That's really a joke because I end up doing half of the homework, right? One third of the homework, half the homework. Sometimes I end up doing 70%. In which case you just have to copy those problems down and do the rest on your own. Okay, <clears throat> I will send the exam on Canvas announcements. So our class officially starts at 9.10. So maybe look for it on Canvas announcements, maybe like 9.02 or 9.03 a.m. And then uh, you will join on the Zoom. So this is the one time you actually have to show up. So up until now, attendance has been optional, but not for the exam. So the exam, you actually got to show up for the exam, right? I'll take attendance. And so uh, you show up with your camera on, have the true background. So don't have behind you Golden Gate Bridge or outer space or something like that, the true background. Keep yourself muted. And if you have any questions during the exam, then uh, put it in the chat. And so you have until 10 o'clock. So officially we start at 9.10 and we have until 10. So at 10 o'clock, I'll close the Zoom session. If you finish early, you can just leave early. All right, so 10 o'clock, the exam is over. I'll give you five more minutes to go click, 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 click. Take pictures on your cell phone, or if you have a scanner, you can scan it. Um, quality is much better if you have a scanner, like cam scanner or something like that. So submit the exam by 10.05. Then I give you until 10.30 to submit the homework. I'll give you more time for the homework because there's more pages, you know, that click, 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 and so on. And by the way, <clears throat> the homework, might be so big you can't fit it on one file or one email may not be able to take the whole thing so students will sometimes break it down into several pieces like maybe uh, one email or one file for 1 1.2 1 1.3 and 1.4 and another one from 1 6 7 and 8 but sometimes students like to use just one email for section or one file one file for 1 2 one file for 1 3 1 4 1 6 that's okay anyway of which i get it because sometimes one email doesn't fit the whole thing, right? <clears throat> so again, the homework you have to submit uh, by half an hour after the test. So our class ends at 10. So you have until 10.05 a.m. to submit the test and 10.30 to submit the homework. And please have separate emails, one email separately for the homework and separately for the test, because if you put them together, I might miss, say, oh yeah, there's all the homework. And then I might miss the fact that you have the test together with it. So please separate email. Now, of course, if you submit the homework early, then that takes care of that. You don't have to worry about it. So anytime after class tomorrow, what's tomorrow at what, 10 o'clock a.m., you can submit the homework um, by then. So 70% homework requirement. Okay. If you happen to finish early, you can just leave early. You know, that's okay too, All right? So homework, um, let's see, what else do I need to say? I'll show all your work. So I guess a good rule of thumb is whatever we did in class, you do the same thing. Right, so I don't accept it if you just give me an answer. Show me all the work. Now, granted, some questions there is no work, but for most of the problems, 
there's some work. So show me step by step. I do this and this and this and so on. So if you just give me an answer, even if it's correct and I don't see any work, you may get little or no credit. If you show me your steps, step by step, you did this, 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 and you just made a small arithmetic mistake. Say, oh yeah, I see what you did. I can follow your logic. I can give partial credit. I do give partial credit. In short, you might get more points with an incorrect answer than if you got a correct answer, right? So good work, incorrect final answer, you're more, more likely to get more points than a correct final answer, but all the steps you did in between didn't make any sense, right? So show me all your steps. I do give partial credit. Okay, what else do we need to say? Formula sheet, right? One formula sheet, eight and a half by 11, double side, put anything you want. Okay, put sample homework problems, put down formulas, okay? Just one, so I'm legally letting you cheat to a certain extent. Okay, put whatever you want, but after that, no other books, notes, can't use people, of course, can't use the internet, can't use a computer and so forth. So the extent by which I'm letting you cheat is one formula sheet where you can write front and back anything that you feel like to help you on the test. Okay, so show all your work. Um, let's see, true background we said, keep yourself muted and turn in the homework and turn in your ID if you haven't already shown me your ID. Okay, so if you don't show me the homework, I don't grade your test. Okay, if you don't show me an ID, I don't grade your test. I need to know who you are for a class like this. Now, yes, if we were meeting face-to-face -face on campus, we meet every day, I get to know what you look like. For a class like this, I don't get to know what you look like. And attendance is mandatory. So I know some of you, you know, some of you are showing up uh, virtual uh, on, the, on the Zoom call 9, 10 to 10 every day. Some of you aren't showing up. I said that was okay. <clears throat> but for the test, you all have to show up. Okay, you must show up for the test <clears throat> synchronously, 9, 10 to 10 o'clock. Um, I'll take attendance. So in other words, you can't just not show up and just kind of sneak it, say, oh, he's not going to know, and I'll just do it at home and just send in the email. I'll know if you're there or not because I'll be taking attendance. Okay. Of course, have your first and last name just as on my row sheet. So don't have your name as math whiz or something like that. I don't know who you are, right? Have your first and last name just as on my row sheet. Don't make me guess who you are. That should not be that hard, of course. All right. And let's see, submit homework. Okay, so that's that. I might say the same thing again tomorrow. Um, some of you are saying, you know, you sure repeat yourself a lot. And yes, that's by design. I repeat myself quite a bit. Um, for one thing, not everybody hears it the first time or somebody was sick. Or to me, it's kind of like, I say it so much, hopefully there's no excuse, right? So somebody says, oh, I didn't know when was a test. That should not be the case. I repeat myself over and over. I say over and over, this is what you turn in. I've said many times, this is the day of the test, right? You say, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to turn in uh, the ID. I've said it several times. I didn't know I was supposed to turn in the homework. I've said it several times. And I think many of you can vouch for me. I've said this over and over, not just one time, but two, three, four times, hopefully. So that's another part of the reason for the repetition um, that I say the same stuff over and over and over. All right, so I'll go on and do 1.8 problems right now. Okay, oh, here we go. So 1.8, I've shown you the video already in case you don't have the book and don't plan to get it. Page 73, I'm gonna pass you again quickly. You might even say this is also a repetition. Yep. Repeat myself quite a bit. Again, the whole idea is hopefully from my standpoint, right? There should not be an excuse to say, oh, I didn't know what the homework was. I don't have the book. I think I'm showing this to you a second time now. And you should not say I'm going too fast. Remember, it's only something to give you even just one second or half a second. You can always look back at the video, pause, fast forward, rewind as much as you want. Might just give you a good image there for a split second. Not even a second, and that's it. Yeah, okay. Okay, so again, and then after that, I show you representative problems from each section, right? So I don't show you the whole thing, I show you enough to get you through some of these. Okay, so number three <coughs> negative x squared plus one. Okay, so you should already know what negative x squared looks like. I guess even go more. x squared 
is a problem which opens up. Negative x squared goes down. And what's the effect of the plus one? Shove the graph up one unit, right? So that is using this property, right? Vertical shift on page 66. Put this on your cheat sheet. The graph of f of x plus c is the graph of f of x shifted up c units. So the plus one means the parabola which used to open down like that, right? The vertex just comes up to zero one. So here we are, zero comma one is the vertex and negative one zero and one zero are my intercepts that are right here. And by the way, you say, how do I get these? Here, y is zero. Just plug in zero. It's a fairly easy algebra, right? To work that out. So if I put a zero here, add x squared, x squared equals one, so x is plus or minus one. Okay, so you should be able to figure out the rough graph of this parabola. So the parabola is either gonna open up or down. Negative coefficient for the x squared means it goes down. Positive coefficient like this one, means it's gonna go up. Okay. Seven, <clears throat> y equals x plus one squared minus one. Okay. So this is a movement of x squared. So you know x squared, vertex is at the origin, opens up. Now, x gets replaced by x plus one. That shifts one to the left. Not to the right, to the left. The minus one moves the whole graph down one. And that's where you wanna use this root. Page 64, horizontal shift. So if they give me F parentheses, blah, 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 right? X minus C shift to the right. F of X plus C shift to the left. That's against your intuition. But put this on your cheat sheet, if you wish. Okay, so I see x plus one, that's one to the left. But the minus one on the outside, like so, means I go one down. So my original parabola, one left and one down. If I go one left and one down, that makes the vertex at negative one, negative one. And then just go like that. Okay, 11, I'm gonna to have to complete the square. It says negative x squared minus two x. So to two that, temporarily ignore that. Okay, if I factor out the negative one, it looks like that, right? So I don't have any more hands, I only have two hands to cover. Maybe I can go like that, yeah. So if I factor out the negative one, it looks like that, negative, <clears throat> x squared plus 2x. So this is the same as this, correct? And now I complete the square. Complete the square, half and square. Take half the coefficient of x and square it. So half of 2, 1. 1 squared is 1. And what's that stuff there? I think I just messed up. So don't look at that. Okay, half of two is one, one squared is one. So I put a plus one. This gets a little tricky. By putting plus one, it's really a subtraction of one because it's being distributed. So I put another plus one. Okay, so by putting plus one, I'm really subtracting one. So to balance a subtraction of one, I add one. Okay, in other words, I claim that this is equivalent to this. And if you're not sure about that, double check, distribute. Negative x squared, there it is. Negative two x, there it is. And then the new stuff is minus one plus one. A minus one plus one is zero. So by adding zero, I get an equivalent expression. Now this factors into a perfect square. x squared plus two x plus one 
is x plus one squared. So I have the opposite of x plus one squared plus one. And now that tells me what happens, right? So for this one, I complete the square, right? So negative x squared got shifted one to the left, one up. So one left, one up means the new vertex is negative one, one. And so graph looks something like this. And there we go. <clears throat> okay. It's 17 gets harder because there's more stuff to it. Whoops. Half x squared minus x plus three, sketch the graph. Okay, I'm gonna do this one two ways. You can pick your way. The first method, I'll try completing the square like before. So in order to complete the square, ignore the three for a moment, that plus three is there factor out the coefficient of x squared. So I take out a half. So this gets a little tricky. And let me try to cover this up right here. If I factor out the half, I multiply this by two in order to balance because one half times two is one. So by factoring out the half from here and here, I put one half parentheses x squared minus two x. So these two blue pens here, ignore them. I claim this is the same as this. Let's try it. What do you get when you distribute right here? One half x squared, and then one half times negative two x is a negative x, and there's a plus three. So these are the same, right? <clears throat> one half x squared minus two x plus three. Now I complete the square on this, negative two. Take the coefficient of x, complete the square. So what's half of negative two? Negative one. Square it. That's negative one squared, one. So that tells me to put a plus one here. But that plus one really means I'm adding a half if I distribute this back. Okay, so that plus one is required to complete the square. You may notice x squared minus two x plus one is a perfect square, it's x minus one squared. But I'm distributing a half. So I go one half x squared minus two x plus a half, right? One half times one is a half. So how do I balance the extra plus a half? Subtract a half. Okay, so now I claim all of this mess is equivalent to this. Check it. One half x squared, there it is. One half times negative two x is negative x, there it is. There's a three. <clears throat> the new stuff in red, well, maybe you can't tell it's red, but it's this. It's one half times one is one half minus a half, which is zero. So they are equivalent. All right, so factorizing, that's one half. This is x minus one squared plus three minus a half, two and a half, five half. So that was a lot of work. Okay, but in any event, now I know what's happening. It opens up. I already knew it opens up because the coefficient is positive. Where's the vertex? One, five halves. Because the vertex, which normally would be at the origin if I just had x squared, is shifted one to the right and two and a half up. So one to the right, two and a half up means the vertex is at one comma five halves. And then very crudely, it looks something like that. You That's explain. by continuing the square. <laughs> Sorry, could you, could, could, okay. could you explain why you uh, subtracted the one half again from the- Right, so I subtracted the one half in order to balance the adding of one half. When I write that plus one, I've actually changed the original to 
adding a half because of the distributive property. Okay. So to balance to adding a half, I subtract a half, which means I've added zero. Adding zero means I got an equivalent expression. So instead of um, doing or like subtracting that just to balance it out, could you just like um, factor it down to x minus one squared? X minus one squared plus three minus a half. Okay, I need to put the minus a half. If I just add a half, I don't get an equivalent expression. Right? Basically, like um, you, your negative b over two a is added to the parentheses part <laughs> and then subtracted to the end of it. But you also have to multiply it by what you factored out from the start. That's how I do it. Um. Well, yeah, you have to balance whatever you did. You have to multiply what you minus out from the second part by what you factored out. That's how I've been doing yes. it. In, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Remember. To get an equivalent expression, you may add zero. You may multiply by one, so to speak. Okay. You can't just add this arbitrarily. Okay. You're adding 0.5 for no reason. They're not going to do that. Okay. If I go to the bank and say, well, I just feel like, why don't you just give me an extra half a dollar? They're not going to do that. They're going to give you zero. That's OK which means don't do anything. These two right here combined, I've added zero, so to speak. Okay, so I have this. Now, this was kind of convoluted, something that I think is much easier. Okay, so if you ignore all this stuff, if I get this thing back in focus, from the get-go, an alternative is to say, well, the vertex is negative B over 2A, we said. Page 65, the vertex is at negative B over 2A. So the opposite of B, negative, negative one is one over two times A, A is a half, two times a half is one. That was a lot faster. Vertex is at one. And how do I get the Y coordinate? Just plug in. Here we already know it's five over two, but you can plug in there. So that would be one half minus one plus three, that's two and a half or five over two. Okay. So you can see, I think it's a lot faster whoops, to do this, but I'm showing you both because you may have to be ready to do both methods. Okay. Show you another one like that. Okay. 21. Similar theme, negative x squared plus four x plus six. Express the quadratic in standard form, find any intercepts, find the maximum and minimum value of the function. Okay, the maximum and minimum value will be at the vertex. Okay, so 21 looks harder than 19. Show you that one. <clears throat> Negative x squared plus four x plus six. Okay, option one, completing the square. So factor out the negative one from just these two, leave the six alone. So if I factor out a negative one, it looks like that. Negative x squared minus four x plus six. So if I multiply all this out, do I get the same as this, right? Negative x squared plus four x, plus six. Then I complete the square, half and square. Half the coefficient of x, half of negative four is negative two. Negative two squared is four. So to complete the square, I put a plus four, which is really a minus four because of the distributive property here. So I have a negative four. How do I balance a negative four? Add four. So I get an equivalent expression right here. So all of this is equivalent to this. Double check. Negative x squared, there it is. Plus 4x, there it is. There's a plus 6. Minus 4 plus 4, which is 0. So that works. So 
So factoring, I get the negative of x minus two squared plus six plus four is 10. I know it opens down, so the vertex will be a maximum. Vertex is two, 10, because that's a shift of two to the right and 10 up. Again, using the rules, the translation rules that we said, right? Using this one for this and the plus 10 is like this. And so two to the right, 10 up. So the vertex is 210, which tells me the maximum value is 10. That's Option two, which I think is easier. Negative B over 2A. Negative B is negative 4 over 2 times negative 1, 2. Vertex is 2. How do I get the Y coordinate? Just plug in. I trust you can do that. Put a 2 right there. Put a 2 right there. You get 10. So I would say don't try to use this thing, even though it's true. You could use this, but nobody wants to do that, right? You don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. It works. How much easier though, say, I'm not going to use that formula. I'll just plug in. So you plug in two right there, two right there. If you do it the right way, it comes out to be 10. Um, number 35 though, like I was going to come and ask you about after class because they totally like want us to use that part in it. And it's like really confusing. I'm just making you aware. They want us to like a, Okay. I'm pretty sure they want us to use that part, but. Um, yeah, so if I have time, we'll come to it, but I want to make sure I cover it. Okay. Down. So if I don't get to it today, we can still do it tomorrow, but I want to make sure I get enough problems so that everybody knows what's happening. Okay, uh, part B, the intercepts. So plug in X to zero, that's easy, zero plus zero plus six. So zero comma six. <clears throat> y equals zero, that's harder. Put a zero right there. Zero equals negative x squared plus four x plus six requires me to use a quadratic formula. Now, normally it's better to have the a be positive. You can force the, the a to be positive if I multiply both sides by negative one. So multiply both sides by negative one. Negative one times zero is zero. Negative one times all this just changes every sign. So it becomes positive x squared minus four x minus six equals zero. So a is one. B is negative four, C is negative six, quadratic formula, okay? If we were meeting face-to-face, -face, I'd make you memorize it, but if you wanna put it on your cheat sheet, you may. Okay. You've done the quadratic formula many times, so just rehashing that. A is one, B is negative four, C is negative six. So X is negative B, the opposite of negative four is four, plus or minus the square root of B squared, negative four squared of 16, minus four times A, which is one, times C, which is negative six. There's a negative here and a negative here, which I chose to make them positive. Okay, so a negative times a negative is a positive. All over two times A, two times one. So this becomes 16 plus 24, which is 40. So four plus or minus square root of 40. And then you might recall from your algebra, 40 is four times 10. And the reason why I want to do that is because four is a perfect square, right? You don't want to do five times eight because five is not a perfect square. Eight is not a perfect square, but four is a perfect square. Square root of four is two. So four plus or minus two radical two divided by 10, and then divide by two, four divided by two is two. Two radical 10 divided by two is just radical 10. So two plus or minus radical 10. So my x-intercepts are 2 plus or minus radical 10, comma, 0. And you don't have to punch that in your calculator if you don't want to. Okay, square root of 10 is like 3.16, I think. I did it before. But you don't have to write 3.16. Just leave it like that. And the y-intercept was 0, comma, 6. Okay. Hmm. And then something like uh, 
23. Use the quadratic formula to find any x-intercepts of the parabola. Okay, so x-intercept means y equals zero, you might recall. So y equals zero. Zero equals six x squared minus five x plus one. A, B, C. A is six, B is negative five, C is one. Throw it in here. So X is negative B, the opposite of negative five is positive five. Plus or minus the square root of B squared, negative five squared is 25 minus four AC, four times six times one over 2a, 2 times 6. 2 times 6 is 12. This is 25 minus 24, which is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. So I have 5 plus or minus 1 divided by 12. So I have nice rational solutions. <clears throat> 5 minus 1 is 4. 4 over 12 is 1 third. <clears throat> 5 plus 1 is 6. 6 over 12 is a half. So I have one third comma zero, one half comma zero. All right, 31 was a much tougher problem. Let me show you 31 and I also wanna go back and do 29, but 31 was a little bit convoluted. How to do that. Find a function whose graph is a parabola with a vertex at one, three, and passes through the point negative two, five. Okay, so how do I do that? So a very crude graph. I know the graph goes through one, three, and also negative two, five is up here somewhere. So I know it opens up. Okay, so the vertex is one, three. That tells me automatically it's gonna be something like this. Some coefficient, x minus one squared plus three. Okay, how do I know that? The vertex, the nice vertex is at the origin, but they tell me it got shifted over to one, three. One to the right, three up. So one to the right means instead of x squared, it's x minus one squared. That's a horizontal shift. And then the three up, means plus three. Okay, so instead of something x squared, it's something a, x minus one squared plus three. Okay, that's shift of one to the right, three up. So there's an a now. How do I find the a? I use the fact that it goes through negative two, five. Through negative two, five means five goes in for y, See, I don't see why. Why is f of x? So I can sneak this in. So it goes through negative two, five. Five goes here. Put a negative two right there and then solve for a. Okay, so one more time, right here, I have y equals a, x minus one squared plus three. This is because the vertex is one, three. They tell me that. So one to the right, three up. One right, three up from the origin is one, three. Okay, come back into focus here. There we go. Now, I plug in negative two right here, five here, and do the algebra. Okay, so negative two minus one is negative three. Squared, you get nine. So five equals a times nine plus three. Clean up the algebra, subtract three on both sides. Two equals nine a. So A is two ninths. I didn't mean to cross this out. I just had bad aim. So two ninths goes here. So final answer, F of X is two ninths, X minus one squared plus three. Okay, so that has a vertex of one, three. And also supposedly if you plug in negative two, you get five. All right, we can double check that. Plug in negative two. Negative two plus one is negative three. 
square it, you get nine. That nine is going to cancel that nine. So you just have two plus three, which is five. So it works. Okay. That's all good. 29. Use the graph of the function shown in the accompanying figure to sketch the graph. Okay, it's going to be too much to sketch it. I'll just say what happens to it. Okay, and maybe for you, you can just do likewise. Okay, and both at the same time. Maybe I can if I quote my paper a little bit. <clears throat> Okay, f of x minus one, like that. X got replaced by x minus one. That moves the graph to the right one. So theoretically, I'd have to shift this graph over one, but I'm not gonna graph it, okay? And you can. I mean, I wouldn't have you on a test do all of these. I might have you just do one. Or I might just say what happens, but don't keep graphing them. Just tell me what happens here. So this is one to the right. And how about B? Well, we already know this is one to the right. Well, what about the plus two? Two up. So 29B, right one, up two. How about F of X plus two like that? That does not go two to the right. It goes two to the left, two left. How about D? Well, we already know that's two left. Two left and then one up. So D, left two, one up. It's plus one. Minus one. Well, this was one up, one down. Left two, one down. And finally, like that, f of x minus one, minus two, one to the right, two down. One to the right, two down. Okay, so here's 29a through f, and here are the solutions. If you wanna put these as samples on your cheat sheet, you may. Turn this chair on that. All right, so let's see how much time I have left to do other problems. See what else I can do on the next page. We have some problems involving domain. Okay, 33, find a domain of the function. So there's square roots. Remember, whenever you have a square root, sometimes I like to cover it up, all right? Square root of blah, blah, blah. Whatever's behind my finger has to be greater than or equal to zero. So x squared minus three, greater than or equal to zero. x squared minus three, greater than or equal to zero. <clears throat> Get my boundary numbers. x squared equals three, so x is plus or minus radical three. Punch in your calculator, it's about 1.7. Okay, so on my number line, I put negative radical three, which is negative 1.7 and positive 1.7. They're both closed circles because I have the line underneath it. Notice if I put in radical three, radical three squared is three, three minus three is zero. So th zero is greater than or equal to zero, true. And likewise, if I put negative radical three, square it again, it's three, three minus three is zero. Zero is greater than or equal to zero, true. But if I didn't have that line underneath it, these would both be open. Okay, region one, region two, region three. <clears throat> and this is where I need to know it's approximately 1.7, right? If I don't know this is 1.7, how do I know what's a number over here and here and here, right? So negative 1.7 to the left of negative 1.7, well, like negative two. Something in the middle, zero and positive two. Okay, this one, it's not worth it to factor it, just plug it in. Okay, negative two. Let's see, negative two squared is four. 
four minus three is one. One is greater than or equal to zero. True. Shade in region one. Zero, zero squared is zero. Zero minus three, negative three, greater than or equal to zero. No, that's false. Don't shade in region two. And region three, two. Two squared is four. Four minus three is one. One is greater than or equal to zero. That's true. So here's my domain. I abbreviate D for domain. Uh, negative infinity, negative radical three with a bracket. Union bracket radical three to infinity. And there we go. Okay, let me see if I can get you one more word problem. 39. A company that produces computer terminals, analyzes productions, and finds a profit is negative, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, so that's the profit. It looks like a parabola, and that would open up or down. We're not asked to graph it, but if you were to graph it, it would open down because of the negative. So if it opens down, would the vertex be a maximum or minimum? Maximum. And they're asking you for a maximum. Right? If the parabola would open up, if the parabola happens to look something like this, then we're looking for a minimum. Okay, so we're almost running out of time. Try to knock this off. Okay, so this said P of X is blah, 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 blah. That's my A, that's my B, that's my C. It's a parabola which opens down, therefore the vertex is a maximum. So how do I find the vertex? Negative B over two A. Yes, you could complete the square. I think most of you probably don't wanna do that. I don't wanna do that. Just do negative B over two A. <clears throat> so negative B, negative 160, over two times a, two times negative 0 0.1. So negative divided by negative is positive. Positive 160 divided by 0 0.2, punch it in a machine, 800. So to maximize production, the vertex that is, what 800 terminals per month. What is the maximum profit? Whatever you get when you plug in 800. Okay, so put 800 right there, put 800 right there, and you pretty much have it. Okay, so negative 0 0.1 times 800 squared plus 160 times 800 minus 20,000, and that gives you the maximum profit. Okay, and the last time I did this, I just said, et cetera. Uh, maybe I have a quick amount of time to punch this into my calculator now. Okay, I'll try to do that. So negative 0.1 times 800 squared plus 160 times 800 minus 20,000. Forty-four thousand. If I punch it in correctly, and by the way, even if I punch this in incorrectly, which is possible, if you show me all this stuff and you made an arithmetic error, I will give you most of the credit. You can make an arithmetic mistake. I can make an arithmetic mistake. Okay, I might just take off one point if I see all of this and all of this. Oh, your work is good. You just made a small arithmetic error. I could do that easily. Okay, I'm not even sure if I typed this incorrectly, but in any event. That is that. Okay. Okay, so that's as much as I was going to do today. So I'm almost done with the section and the chapter. I have a few more problems that I'll do tomorrow, and then I'll let you have time to ask questions the rest of tomorrow also. So let's see, I was going to do 45 tomorrow, and then I can go back and do some problems from previous sections that some people had questions of earlier. So that's the game plan for tomorrow. And then Friday is going to be our test. Okay, so let me stop the share and check the chat if there's any questions. Otherwise, we're done for the day. Let me see. Okay, I don't see anything in the chat right now. All right, anybody has a question, please?
All right, seeing nothing and hearing nothing, that'll be it. So we'll call it a day. All right, have a good day, everybody. And we'll see everybody. Oh, thank you. I'm Professor. Thanks, Excuse you. me. Bye. Okay, bye, everybody. Uh, Professor.